This video is about the graphs of sine and cosine. I want to graph the functions y equals cosine t and y equals sine t, where t is in radians. I'm going to think of this being the t-axis and this being the y-axis. One way to do this is to plot points. So I'll fill in this chart using my knowledge of special angles on the unit circle. These points will be easier to graph if I convert them all to decimals. Now I'll plot the points for cosine and connect the dots to get a graph of y equals cosine t from t equals 0 to t equals 2 pi. To continue the graph for t values less than 0 or bigger than 2 pi, I could plot more points, or I could just use the fact that the cosine values repeat. If I add or subtract 2 pi to the, my angle t, I'll be at the same place on the unit circle, so my cosine will be exactly the same. Therefore, my values of cosine, which are represented by my y values on this graph, repeat themselves. For example, when my t value is 2 pi plus pi over 6, about like here, its cosine is the same as the cosine of just pi over 6. So I'll take this dot here and repeat it over here. Similarly, the, when t is like 2 pi plus pi over 4, I get the same value of cosine as when it's just pi over 4. So this dot is going to repeat. And I can continue repeating all my dots. This one repeats over here at 2 pi plus, uh, say, pi over 3. And so my whole graph will repeat something like this. It also repeats on this side something like this. Since subtracting 2 pi from my t values will also give me the same value of cosine. We can also plot points to get a graph for sine and extend it by repetition. Going forward, I'll usually write the function sine and cosine as y equals cosine of x and y equals sine of x. When I write it this way, notice that x now refers to an angle, while y refers to a value of cosine or sine. That's a different meaning of x and y compared to when we're talking about the unit circle, where x refers to the cosine value and y refers to the sine value. Now, let's look at some properties of the graphs of sine and cosine. The first thing you might notice is that the graph of cosine and the graph of sine are super similar to each other. In fact, you can think of the graph of cosine as just being the graph of sine shifted to the left by pi over 2. So we can write cosine of x as the sine function of x plus pi over 2, since adding pi over 2 on the inside moves the graph horizontally to the left by pi over 2. Or we can think of the graph of sine as being constructed from the graph of cosine by shifting the cosine graph right by pi over 2. That means we can write sine of x as equal to cosine of x minus pi over 2, since subtracting pi over 2 on the inside shifts the cosine graph to the right by pi over 2. Next, let's look at domain and range. The domain of sine and cosine is all real numbers. I'll write that as negative infinity to infinity, but the range is just from negative 1 to 1. That makes sense because sine and cosine come from the unit circle. The input values for the domain come from angles, and you can use any number as an angle, positive, negative, as big as you want, just by wrapping a lot of times around the circle. The output values for the range, that is the actual values of sine and cosine, come from the coordinates on the unit circle, and those coordinates can't be any bigger than 1 or any smaller than negative 1. So that gives us our range. As far as even and odd behavior, you can tell from the graph, here's cosine, that it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, and so it must be even, whereas the graph of sine is symmetric with respect to the origin and must be odd. The absolute maximum values of these two functions is 1, and the absolute minimum value is negative 1. We can also use the words midline, amplitude, and period to describe these two functions. The midline is the horizontal line halfway in between the maximum and minimum points. Here, the midline is y equals 0. 
The amplitude is the vertical distance between a maximum point and the midline. You can also think of the amplitude as the vertical distance between a minimum point and the midline, or as half the vertical distance between a min point and a max point. For the cosine function and the sine function, the amplitude is 1. A periodic function is a function that repeats at regular horizontal intervals. The horizontal length of the smallest repeating unit is called the period. For y equals cosine of x, the period is 2 pi. Notice that the period is the horizontal distance between successive peaks, or maximum points, or between successive troughs, or minimum points. Algebraically, we can write cosine of x plus 2 pi equals cosine of x, and sine of x plus 2 pi equals sine of x to indicate that the functions repeat themselves over an interval of 2 pi and have a period of 2 pi. In this video, we graphed y equals cosine of x and y equals sine of x and observed that they both have a midline at y equals 0, an amplitude of 1, and a period of 2 pi.